<clears throat> as I sat out there in the pew, all I could think about were these beautiful flowers with that cold snow out there. That's a miracle. <laughs> They're so pretty on a day like today. <clears throat> Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. <clears throat> Love God, serve people, transform lives. This is our mission statement. A mission statement is a statement that tells about you and your purpose or goal. And this is our church's mission. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. <clears throat> I was asked to provide my personal testimony. A testimony is making a statement, backing up a claim, and supporting a fact. I don't have a dynamic story to tell you. My story is more like the tortoise, slow and steady and still growing. And I continue to grow and mature in my love for God through prayer, Bible study, and church attendance. I am grateful that I was raised in a Christian home where the golden rule was taught, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It was taught and not forgotten. Prayers were heard in our home, and our children grew up in a similar Christian family setting. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Mostly, I see the love and the power of God in nature. Beautiful flowers like we have this morning, trees, mountains, ocean, sun, moon, stars, babies, and animals. I'm a visual learner. I learn by seeing a picture or an action. I feel called to this sanctuary to learn and grow in my walk with the Lord. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. O Lord, in the morning I will direct it to you and I will look up. I want to tell you about a gentleman that approached us on the Atlantic City boardwalk many years ago. He was a typical old salt or beach bum, sandals, long hair, jewelry, cut off jeans, you know the look. He asked us if we knew Jesus. <clears throat> I told him yes we did. We were Christians and attended the Methodist church as did the friends that were with us. I did not know this man, nor will I likely see, ever see him again. But I will always remember what he said on this beautiful day at the shore. He went on to tell us that no one ever told him about the love of God until he was over 40 years old and how much he had missed not knowing about the Lord all those years. He would not have known about the love of God if no one had told him. He had a dynamic change in his life from learning about God. This is why he walks the boardwalk asking people if they know the Lord. So when asked if I would speak, I thought, suppose no one spoke of the love of Jesus. <clears throat> How would anyone know, especially outside of the church? I learned and I remember. I remember best from seeing acts of kindness and unkindness. I am a visual person and will not forget something that made an impression on me, but what, by what was demonstrated by acts of kindness, forgiveness, justice, care, and service. <clears throat> when I look back on that incident on the boardwalk, I think that it's pretty hard not to hear about the word of God today. We have so many different methods and reading materials and the internet and churches and many willing workers. But I thought his heart probably wasn't ready yet to hear the word of God. And it's through this um, hearing of the word that he had a transformation or a dynamic change. 
That same day, I saw a woman demonstrate the love of Jesus by purchasing a takeout meal for a homeless person and presenting it to him. That is an image I have saved in my mind. I have loved you, you also love one another. Jesus came to save the world, but he started by serving the person right in front of him. I can't just sit in the pew, I want to be involved in the great commandment that Jesus gave to all of us to go out into the world to spread the love of Jesus. And that might start right in our own home or neighborhood. As a chaplain aide, volunteer chaplain aide at Virtual Hospital in Mount Holly, I enjoyed visits with patients and had the opportunity to witness to others outside my church about the love of God. Recently, I have been working with a group within our church to help with the formation of the Method Methodist Church Caring Team so that we will be able to show the loving heart of Jesus by visiting with church members to listen, talk, and serve those that desire a visit from a caring team member. A group from my former church are part of a Bible study, and we ladies learn together from the Bible. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God will last forever. My journey and witness continues as I watch and listen together with all of you here at Bedford Methodist Church. Prayer is worship. Our praying should be full of adoration, affection, and fondness for God. Prayer is the highest expression of our dependence on God. Prayer by its nature is requesting. It is not insisting or clamoring. We wait with patience and submission until God provides. Prayer focuses and unites our fragmented hearts. In a quiet place of prayer, God comforts, instructs, and listens to us as we learn to love and worship him. Prayerfulness cannot be an event. <clears throat> it is a way of being in relationship with God. This kind of intimate relationship is developed when God's people view prayerfulness as a way of life. The Psalms encourage us to begin each day by lifting our voice to the Lord to fill our day with conversations with God and to give ourselves totally to prayer as a way of life and desire to be with God. It is a way of honoring God. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I recently read in the newspaper a prayer that was said by Eleanor Roosevelt. Keep us at task too hard for us that we may be driven to thee for strength. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Love God, serve people, transform lives. I leave you with powerful words from a favorite hymn of mine. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Amen. <clears throat>